Hello! In this video we discuss functions of two discrete random variables. In particular, we consider a scenario in which I have a random variable z which can be written as g of x and y where x and y are discrete random variables. For example, z could be x squared times y, function like that. And we are interested in, for example, finding the probability mass function of z. So uh, the discussion here is very similar to the discussion that uh, we had previously about a function of a random variable. Uh, here we just have two random variables. So the steps are pretty much the same. Uh, first, what we're going to do is we're going to find the range of the random variable z, which is the set of all possible values of uh, this random variable. In particular, I can write this as gxi yj such that you know x i y j is a possible pair in the range of the two random variables and uh, next what we're going to do is we're going to for all values in the range we need to find uh, their probabilities for example if n is a value in this range we need to find probability that the random variable z is equal to n and this is equal to the probability that g of x and y is equal to n because z is equal to g of x and y. And to find this probability, again, we assume that x and y are discrete random variables here. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to see what values of x and y satisfy this equality and then add their probabilities. In particular, we can write this as equal to g of x, i, y, j is equal to n and sum over all the probabilities of these points. So, uh, to better understand uh, this, let's look at an example. So, x and y are two independent random variables. Uh, both of them are uh, Poisson. x is Poisson with parameter lambda, y is Poisson with parameter mu. And we define the random variable z as x plus y. And our goal here is to find the probability mass function of z. So, remember that if x is Poisson, then uh, px of k is equal to e to the minus lambda, lambda to the k, divided by k factorial for k equals 0, 1, 2, and so on. And similarly, py of, let's say, l is equal to e to the minus mu, uh, mu to the l, divided by l factorial, again, l from 0, 1, 2, and so on. So since z is defined x plus y, we immediately notice that the range of the random variable z is also 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, right? If you get a value, uh, you know, uh, from here, add it to the value from here, you get a value uh, in this range. So that's uh, good. So far, we obtained the range of the random variable z. And the next step is finding the probabilities of all of these points in the range. So let's start with 0. So what is the probability that z is equal to 0? Well, the only way that z can be 0 is that both x and y are 0. So this is equal to probability uh, that x is 0 and y is 0, basically pxy of 0 and 0. And because x and y are independent, this is just px of 0 times py of 0. And uh, using two formulas here, we obtain this uh, as uh, you know, if you put uh, 0 here, k equals 0, you got e to the minus lambda. And if you put l equals 0, you get e to the minus mu. So this is just e to the minus lambda plus mu. So let's do one more. Probability is that z equals 1 is, well, z can be 1. Uh, there are two possibilities. Either x is 0 and y is 1, or x is 1 and y is 0. So, again, because they are independent, this is px of 0, py of 1, plus px of 1, py of 0. And, again, we use these two formulas here. We obtain e to the minus lambda, mu e to the minus mu, plus um, mm, lambda e to the minus lambda times mu. And this is equal to, sorry is e to the minus mu. This is equal to e to the minus lambda plus mu times lambda plus mu. Now, uh, so you get the idea. Now, in a general case, let's see if we can find probability that z is equal to n, pz of n. 
for the rest of the values um, so in this case uh, we can write this as uh, you know how can z become n you know x z is x plus y so one possibility is that x is 0 y is n another possibility is x is 1 y is n minus 1 and finally the last possibility is that x is n y is 0 so this is basically sum from k 0 to n p x of y of k and n minus k right which is by independence of x and y this is px of k py of n minus k and um, so we know th these two values because uh, these are Poisson random variables so this is k equals 0 to n uh, e to the minus lambda lambda to the k divided by k factorial e to the minus mu mu to the n minus k divided by n minus k factorial and you know we can factor out e to the minus lambda plus mu and then sum from k 0 to n n 1 over k factorial n minus k factorial lambda to the k mu to the n minus k now um, basically we are done uh, with finding the probability that z equals n now the good thing here is that happens uh, is that for this case we can actually simplify this if you note uh, here it, this thing looks a lot like uh, n choose k uh, th there is only a, an n factorial missing so let's multiply it by n factorial and divide by n factorial so n factorial divided by n factorial so the whole thing becomes e to the minus lambda plus mu over n factorial sigma k from 0 to n and choose k lambda to the k mu to the n minus k now if you remember actually this uh, is the binomial uh, expansion but you, you remember the binomial formula if you want to expand mu plus lambda to the power of n actually it's going to be exactly like this so this is equal to e to the minus lambda plus mu divided by n factorial times e lambda plus mu to the power of n and when you look at this so this is true for n equals 0 1 and so on so this is the pz of n probability that z equals n and if you look at this carefully you see that basically what it says is that z is a Poisson random variable with parameter lambda plus mu so that's an interesting property of the Poisson random variable if you have two independent Poisson random variables, one of them with parameter lambda, the other one with parameter mu, if you add them, you get another random variable with parameter lambda plus mu. Okay, thank you.